Hey there, everyone. Welcome to a special bonus episode here on Legion Podcast. Uh, it's me, your pal Bo, and this is going to be a very spoiler-heavy review of the new James Wan film, Malignant. So if you haven't seen the movie and have any interest in seeing it, uh, the movie relies very heavily on some reveals. So I don't want to spoil the experience for you. Uh, in a nutshell, I'm very mixed about this movie. Uh, but if you are uh, uh, someone who wants to experience the movie as cleanly, as purely uh, a cinematic experience as you can, uh, then please go watch the movie and then come back and we'll talk about it then. So moving forward, I'm assuming you have seen the, the new film Malignant uh, and we are going to speak openly about the secrets of this film. So for those of you who are longtime listeners of Legion podcasts and have followed my exploits in particular, uh, first of all, God bless you uh, and thank you. Second of all, uh, I'm not really a big James Wan fan. Uh, I don't like Saw very much. I certainly don't like the Saw franchise. Um, I don't really care for the Conjuring movies very much. Uh, I, I think it's a lot of jump scares. I think they're very pretty. And and this is a, a recurring theme here in the movie Malignant. I, I think that James Wan has a great eye for uh, cinematography, or maybe he just has a great cinematographer. Um, I generally enjoy his color palette outside of the Saw films. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's just uh, one of those resonant frequency things where I'm not uh, a big a big fan of his work as a whole. Um, that is not to say that people who enjoy his work are wrong. Uh, it is just not necessarily for me. I, uh, going into this, I would have said his best movie was Death Sentence. Uh, which is the most non-horror film that he's done. And I kind of still stick to that. I still think that Death Sentence is maybe the most satisfying film experience that he's done today. For me. Um, so I went into Malignant real blind. Uh, the only thing I knew about it was the swirl of conversation around it being that uh, this was sort of a giallo film. Which it kind of is, um, but I I don't know that that's the first place my head would have gone when watching the movie. It felt more it felt more schlocky than that, uh, but not quite as schlocky as I would have liked. Well, let's get into it. So the story of Malignant is this: you have uh, a main character who is a, a woman at the beginning of the film. Uh, you see her in a relationship that is abusive and uh, when she gets knocked on the back of the noggin, she starts to experience these visions of people dying. And uh, we are also given at the front end of the film a, a little pre-credit sequence uh, in which we see some monstrous thing um, manipulating electricity and uh, you hear someone saying like, oh, it's feeding on the electricity. Uh, I guess that plays a part. Anyway, we'll get into that. Anyway, they say they have to excise the tumor. We have to, we have to remove the tumor finally. So that is kind of your setup is that we have this monstrous thing that we have seen at the beginning of the movie uh, very briefly. And we have this woman who is experiencing visions of murders. Uh, and every time one of these visions of murders happens, her head bleeds from the back. And this is the point in the film where I was like, oh, so it's like the dark half or it's like basket case where there is this absorbed twin or something that is going around killing everyone. And uh, again, spoilers, that's exactly what it is. The only, the only thing I had wrong uh, from this early guess in the movie at about the 30 minute mark was that, uh, it is not a separate thing. It is a, a, a thing that emerges from, uh, this woman's own body, um, and kind of takes over. It's like a, a twin buried in her skull that will take control of her body and, and, and sort of give the main character these images to chew on, to, to 
believe that she is not actually there at the time of, of these murders. So that said, with the, the premise out of the way that uh, her body is being stolen by this twin and, and revenge is being wrought on the people that would have tried to kill this twin, Gabriel. Um, so let, let's address some of the other points of the film. First of all, let, let's start with the good. Uh, I think this is one of James Wan's best shot movies. Uh, at the very beginning, um, the scenes are awash in that kind of blue-green color palette that he liked to use, especially with Saw. Uh, I was glad to see that that only happened there and a couple of other times. It's like, anytime there's low light, James Wan just opts for this blue-green kind of coloring and lighting that makes me want to throw up. Uh, but uh, that only happens a couple of times in this movie, I think for the most part, because Juan himself said this was inspired by Giallo, and there were some Giallo elements to be sure, um, that there there's a wider color palette, there's some rich reds and, and that kind of thing, and that's just nice to see. It's nice to see Juan do a movie that it feels like you're using all the colors of the rainbow and not... Uh, not just the blue, yellow, green uh, corner of it. Uh, so that's really nice. It, it, it's really uh, well shot. There are some great uh, cinematic framing in the movie. There, I mean, it's well directed. It's a well directed movie. Um, so that the, and and I will say that the action sequences in it, which there are a couple, are very good. Uh, that was probably my favorite part of the movie when it really embraced the the premise of it and just had fun with it. So that's the good stuff, and I and I do think that's really good. And I would kind of argue that Malignant is it's worth like that afternoon watch, whether or not you respond to the movie, and you very well might have. You might have loved this movie, and I don't I don't uh, dismiss anyone's opinions for enjoying a film, but now let me get around to the idea of why I personally didn't care for it. Uh, one, I think that the performances are a bit arch in a way that makes you feel like you're watching a movie. And I suppose that could be the point of these performances is to sort of say like, Hey, isn't it great that we're making this kind of grindhouse movie in a modern context and let's all sort of acknowledge within the film that it's a film. Uh, but I, that's not a great time for me. I don't want to be reminded of the fact that I'm watching a movie and a movie that isn't about movies, uh, if you can follow that logic. But yeah, so I think a lot of the performances are either not great or they were given direction to sort of overact, to kind of reach for the back row of the theater a little bit. And that didn't appeal to me much, that, especially in that early scene. I was like... I, I thought the, the first scene was going to be a dream or something because of how the performers acted. That I, I didn't think that was real. And it turns out it was. And that was one of those moments of like, oh, well, okay. Uh, so I wasn't crazy about some of the performances, although I think the lead is fine. I think some of the surrounding performances aren't quite as good. One of the bigger problems I had with the movie is that it is so reliant on the twist, like the mystery of the movie of what is going on. It's this big investigation. And like I said, having seen Basket Case, having read and seen The Dark Half, and maybe this is just an affect of age, right? That I've seen a lot of movies and I've read a lot of books. And so when this movie sort of dropped its clues... Uh, I was like, oh, okay, well, so it's a twin thing. Got it. All right, let's go. And the movie keeps teasing that. Like, it doesn't ever cop to what's happening until the third act. And so there's an entire second act of this movie where I'm waiting for the movie to catch up to the realization I've already had. Because all the clues are there. The evidence continues to build that this is what the case is. And like I said, short of the... <laughs> the difference of, oh, it's a conjoined twin who's acting on their own, and the reality was, oh, it's a conjoined twin that's using her body. That was the only thing I didn't get right. Uh, in fact, I found myself kind of hoping that, given the title, Malignant, that it was going to be an actual twin that had been, like, thrown into the sewer or something like that. Like, if you're going to do 
this sort of schlocky premise. I wish the movie had been schlockier about it. You know, there's some decent gore in it. Another another positive uh, where Juan allows himself to get a little grindhouse with some of this, which is, is fun. And there's some, you know, genuinely nice surprising moments. There's one in particular. I really enjoyed the scene where the adopt, not adoptive, the biological mother comes crashing through the ceiling uh, to kind of announce the beginning of the third act. Um, I, and I thought that was a really fun moment. But I also found much of the movie felt like it was spinning its wheels on its way to a revelation that I'd already had. Uh, so that was really frustrating for me as, as a viewer. And it makes the film a little dull because, it, like I said, it spent so much time trying to uh, fill out this mystery and try to hook you in uh, to, you know, hey, what, what could possibly be going on? But I didn't think it was all that mysterious. I felt like it was pretty obvious. Um, another problem I have is that the characters are paper thin. Uh, there was even the main character... I never really felt anything for her other than the fact that she was abused and had uh, these miscarriages. I didn't really know anything about her. Like there was no real depth to her and her relationship with like her adoptive parents or her sister. That's as close as you get is the relationship between her and her sister. But there's not much hay made of that uh, within the script of like, is she haunted by this past was she ever concerned about her biological parents or anything like that and because they don't ever explore any of her sort of interior uh life with uh, you know family and and she's trying to create her own there's one bit where she talks about how wanting to have a blood relation with someone but that seems to be forgotten by the end of the movie where there's never a moment where she like perhaps wants Gabriel, this conjoined twin, to stay because at least it's a blood relation and that maybe Gabriel could use that to uh, manipulate her in some way. But that doesn't ever really happen. Uh, the sister character, this adoptive sister, they have a very close relationship, but you don't know anything about her either other than she might be into the detective, but that doesn't really matter. And and that was a, a big problem I had for much of the movie is like, well, this doesn't matter. The mother character, you know, revealing like, oh yeah, you used to talk on this phone to this kid named Gabriel. That doesn't matter. Um, it, it, it all feels like a lot of wheel spinning. And, and like I said, it gives you a, a set of characters that are hard to relate to because there's not a whole lot there's not a whole lot there. There's not a lot of there there, to uh, to borrow a phrase. You know, all you're left with in the movie, really, for me, when when the mystery is not all that mysterious and the characters aren't all that great, is how does the movie look? How how does the the more horrific elements of the movie play out? And I'll say that those are the the things that make the movie um, more palatable. And at least got me through it. There were a couple of times, because I was watching this on HBO Max, where I thought, like, maybe I'm just going to turn this off. I might be done with this. Uh, fortunately, the third act does have some really nice set piece uh, work with Gabriel slash the other lady whose name I can't remember. I watched this movie less than uh, 12 hours ago. And I, aside from the detective whose name was, like, Coca or Keiko or something... Uh, because that name was unusual. Couldn't tell you another name in the movie uh, other than Gabriel, uh, who is our, you know, tumorous villain of the film. Which is probably not a great thing. Uh, and I don't think it speaks to my attention level because I was quite focused on it. I was, I was looking forward to this because uh, there had been enough talk around the release of this movie. And this is where, like, horror social media will, will screw you time and again. Where they'll just decide that a movie is a masterpiece and all all kind of flock to it. And so I was hearing a lot of good things and I was really hoping that this was going to be the James Wan movie that really turned me around. I really was. I don't I don't say that lightly. I I'm I'm not dismissive of this movie at all. Uh I wanted to like it and I do think I like it more than most James Wan films in fairness. Uh but I also don't like most James Wan films very much. 
Another problem I have with this movie is that it's it's got a very schlocky grindhouse premise. Like I said, it's very basket case. And it just doesn't get as sleazy and schlocky as a basket case. Like it's got a basket case premise with a more Hollywood execution. And those two things don't quite go together. Maybe th this is just me uh, loving some Hen and Lauder uh, a little too much. But I wish that Malignant had fully embraced the premise and been allowed to get weird with it in, as opposed to tease out this mystery. Like, I wish the reveal of who and what Gabriel was was more of a second act thing than a third act thing. This could totally be the, the my own personal problem with having seen too many movies and read too many horror novels that I just don't think this was all that surprising. And I didn't think it was uh, nearly as gory and, and ridiculous with its premise as I would have liked to have seen it. Um, it, it gets close sometimes, and I, and I think that's when the movie's at its best. Uh, but I, I still think there's a little bit too much meandering in this movie when we ought to be doing uh, a little bit more fun time. Uh, also, with a like an hour and fifty ish minute runtime, um, it feels a little bloated. Uh, but again, that's because a lot of the second act, I was way ahead of the movie and just wanted the movie to hurry up and get there already. Uh, so again, perhaps that's just a personal problem and not a problem with the, the movie as a whole for other viewers. But uh, I did not have the best time with *Malignant*. Uh, I thought it was fine. I thought there were good things about it. Like I said, there, there are uh, moments that I really enjoyed in the movie, but as a whole, uh, I don't know that I'll go back and watch it again anytime soon. Uh, I thought it was uh, an interesting exercise in the horror genre. It's nice to see, I guess, a big time director who had just done a movie like Aquaman returning to the genre to do something that's a little more audacious and I'll give him credit for that. Like if you have never heard of the dark half or basket case, then this movie I'm sure feels very original and very surprising to a lot of people. And that seems to be a lot of the reaction, but you know, I've, uh, I, I didn't have that reaction. I've, I've, I've seen too much. These eyes have seen too much to be surprised by a movie like malignant. You know, let me know. What was your experience with Malignant? Uh, I, I don't discount anyone who enjoyed it. Um, and and feel free to, to drop some comments below. And perhaps uh, you'll turn me around on it. Um, because I'm open to uh, enjoying this movie more than I did. But uh, I don't know that I can be talked out of the fact that the movie was both unsurprising and filled with characters that didn't have a whole lot of depth. And there just wasn't much for me to uh, dig my fingers into to get me through the movie. Uh, although I will readily admit that uh, it has some uh, truly terrific action sequences uh, in that third act. So uh, that's really, I, I would say if you, you don't necessarily need to watch the whole movie, watch the third act and, and <laughs> you're going to be just fine. I could totally see myself watching the holding cell sequence and the police station sequence uh, on its own because those were a lot of fun. Uh, there were some good stunt work and, and some good uh, camera work and, and all of that. So that, I think, was the highlight of the film for me and, and made it uh, kind of worthwhile. And where I landed on this movie was about a two and a half stars out of five. And I think it's because that third act, uh, while not surprising, was well executed and I'll give it marks for that. And for also not being uh, a bluish green uh, affront to the eyes. So that was nice too. Um, all things being equal, I, I feel Malignant is merely an average movie uh, with some, some nice highlights, but plenty of...